All right, saints, we continue with part two of United under One Vindicated Headship, which is Christ the Lord in the prophet, in the body of his bride in this day. In the same manner that Christ the Lord came down and was veiled in the body of his son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which was the promise word for that day at the end of the dispensation of the Jewish dispensation. This one is the end of the dispensation for the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Always at the end, God himself comes down. The first 2,000 years, God came down and operated through Noah, the prophet. Noah was the Messiah. Noah was the savior of that day. Today, when people read about Noah, they scorn, they laugh because uh, they don't understand. They don't understand and they have no means of understanding outside the revelation of the word that comes through the prophet. All of us, when we were in denominations, we just took Noah to be just Noah. And indeed, Noah was just a man like us. But when God came down and anointed him, he became the deliverer. He became the Messiah, the savior of that day. Only the people that received Noah and believed in Noah were saved. Were saved. This is the thing that people are missing in this day because they hang on to tradition. It's okay when you read about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just the same like the, the, what, the, the Pharisees were reading about Jehovah when Christ came to the earth. It was fine what they were reading, but that was the day of another day which had passed. And they were still living in the grey of the, the law when the dispensation of the sun had come. And in this day now, we are in the dispensation of the bride. And the people are still in, in living in the grey of the sonship, which was 2,000 years ago. Uh, the dispensation of the Son of God, which was the dispensation of, of Christ. Then we came into the Holy Ghost dispensation for seven church ages. Then at the end, the bride age is ushered in. Only by grace, those who are ordained to follow will follow and see what I'm talking about. Yes. Now... Uh, we continue uh, with part two. Um, I will continue on uh, paragraph 129. The message of the hour, the message which is in the books, is for all believers. Don't leave this to your pastors and say, no, it's the pastor's job. My, 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 my. You are hanging. Remember this message. It's about your soul. So you can't leave it in the hands of another man. How we appreciate we we appreciate the pastors and the ministers for they by their gifts they help to to make this thing simple for the late to understand. But it is imperative that if you are part of this book, God will make a way for you to understand this message by God Himself directly to you. You must get revelation from God direct to you. We thank God for ministers. We thank God for what we are doing. But you still also need to, to grasp it spiritually, direct in your soul, so that you are not moved by any man. You are not moved by any occurrences that may happen. You remain standing on the solid rock, which is Christ, the Word made flesh in this day. Again, in the person of William Aaron Brenham, the Son of Man in human flesh again. The Word of God in human flesh for the end time to receive his elected church. <clears throat> Paragraph 252529. Then our headship is a kingdom. Our headship is a kingdom. The kingdom of God is within you, said, said the Bible Jesus. The kingdom of God, we are not a denomination. We belong to a kingdom, and the kingdom is the word of God made spirit and life in our own life, bringing to pass every promise in this day as it did in that day when the word and God 
was one, and the Word and God is one in his church today, making it the headship of the body that is redeemed to bring the message in the last day and to be taken up from the dead in the resurrection to go back and we will restore again as Adam and Eve in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. The threefold mystery of God, his body, oh my, notice closely, like in types, Israel of old, blank spots. Now, uh, I want us to go through what we have just read here. It's saying here that uh, uh, the kingdom of God is in you. Saints are asking, where is the kingdom of God? We are still dying. We are still in what, 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 what? And then the prophet is trying to show us here that the kingdom of God has come and it is now in us. The millennium, which you are asking, where is it? It's in the word, in us. And the kingdom of God has come. Where is the king? He is now in us by his word. You see... Uh, the prophet says, the kingdom of God is within you. This is the same words which were used by the Lord Jesus Christ in his day. He, 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 could, not, he could not tell them to say, the kingdom of God is now in me. Because they were supposed to catch a revelation that God was now in his son. But they could not. So he said, the kingdom of God is in you. Now, the same language is repeated here at the end time by the Son of Man to say the kingdom of God is in you. It has come. It's not coming. It has already come. There is nothing coming since this thing of saying it's, we're going to see this and this. Nothing is coming. The only thing that's just going to happen if you are elected is to change the dimension. Then you understand all these other things that you wanted to understand on this side, which is impossible for you to understand in this other side, on this other side. On this other side, we only grasp this by the revelation which we have been given. And by faith, we receive it and we accept it. Say the Bible says, Jesus, the kingdom of God, we are not a denomination. We are no longer, the true elected church is no longer a denomination. It's a kingdom. We belong to a kingdom. And the kingdom is the word of God, made spirit and life in our own life, bringing to pass every promise in this day as it did in that day when the word and God was one. The kingdom of God is bringing to pass every promise for this day as it did that day when the word and God became one. When Christ and God became one, he, he fulfilled all the promises of that day. And in this day, when the word again and the church has become one. The word, God, and the prophet became one. And we are also becoming one with the prophet by receiving the message. And then the kingdom of God, it, the prophet says, it's doing exactly what it did when it, when it came that side. Show me anything which Brother Brenham did not do, which was done by Christ 2,000 years ago. Everything which was done by Christ was repeated in this day only on a higher level. Only a higher level and spiritual level. I had a brother that was uh, trying to say, hey, bro, Jesus Christ, he walked on water. Show me where Jesus walked on water. Oh my. I, I know I did not answer the brother because I, I realized that though he's a pastor, but he's just a baby in the word. Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, walked on the water of Galilee. Christ in this day walked on many waters all over the world, the whole ocean. He walked above the oceans of the whole world. Water stands for many people, many people. That ministry of Christ was only, of Jesus of Nazareth, was only confined to a small geographical area. The walking of water was just symbolizing his ministry over that small geographical area. But he, the minister of Christ, the word, the same word that was in Christ, that became one in the prophet, has walked over the oceans of the world. Remember, the Bible says there was a woman that was seated on a beast that was over waters, over waters in the book of Revelation. Those waters are multitudes and multitudes of people. 
the, the Catholic Church is over multitudes and billions of people. And the word in this day did the same thing. It depends on uh, what is in you. If you still think to say no, uh, walking on the water is greater than the ministry that went around the whole world seven times. That's up to you because Jesus himself said, he that believes in me, more works or greater works than this he shall do. And this was the fulfillment of it. The Lord Jesus Christ took bread and fish and broke and fed 5,000. 5, that was a, a great miracle. But now I want you to see something here. Right now here I am in the midst of Africa and I'm delivering, I'm, I'm feeding out the, the broken bread, the broken bread and fish by the Son of Man in this day to the whole world. Which ministry is greater? Which ministry is greater? The ministry of the Son of Man in this day is greater than the ministry that he himself had 2,000 years ago. Because the ministry that Jesus had was only confined to a small area called Israel in the Middle East. But the ministry of the Son of Man, Christ in this day, has covered the entire world and it's still going on to this day. There is no place, no country on the earth has not heard of this message. They know it as a message, but we know it as Christ because the message and Christ is one. Blessed be the name of God. So, my brother, it depends on the way you understand the word of God. Christ, when he came, he was born in the natural there by Maria. But there's been another birth of Christ at the end time by the Pentecostal church, a Pentecostal woman. Not a natural woman, but a spiritual woman. Gave birth to the Son of God again in this day. As Maria uh, walked with Jesus for nine months, when Jesus was growing naturally in the womb of Mary, the Pentecostals uh, 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 was the womb of Christ during their, uh, during their age. And Mary gave birth to Jesus and got separated. So did the Pentecostal in the end separate itself from the word when the word was born. It is the same thing, my brother. What happened to Israel was in the natural up to the time of their Messiah, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. The same thing which occurred to Israel in the natural is what has happened to the Gentile church from the time the church was started on the day of Pentecost to the end time here in which the Messiah has come again in the physical form called William Marion Brenham. There the Messiah came at the end of the dispensation of the law in the physical form of Jesus of Nazareth. Here the Messiah has come at the end of the Lord in the physical form of a redeemed vessel, the church, a man called William Marion Brenham. It is the same thing. The, 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 the law was a shadow of the New Testament church. The law actually was, also had a seven church age. So, which means that it had the first messenger in Moses and ended up with the last messenger, which was the Lord Jesus Christ. And we too had the first messenger, which was St. Paul, and ends up in the last messenger, the Christ himself, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ in the bodily form, called William Marion Brenham, at the end time. Blessed be the name of God. Blessed be the name of God. To the elect, I know they will catch what I'm talking about. It will never make sense to the outsiders. It will never make sense to a carnal believer. But to a spiritual believer, he will catch what I'm saying here. The dispensation of the law started by a vindicated prophet called Moses. And it ended by a vindicated prophet called the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, the, the dispensation of grace also started by a vindicated prophet called uh, St. Paul meeting the pillar of fire and being given the message for the church ages. And then it ends again with the vindicated prophet, Christ himself, in the body reform of his church called William Marion Brenham. Oh my. As it did in that day when the word and God was one. And the word and God is one in his church today making it the headship of the body that is redeemed. The word and 
God is one today, making it the headship of the body. We have received the headship. What is the headship, Brother Mukonyo? It is Christ that fully returned back to his church in 1963 by a person of vindication. The person himself of Christ descended, coming was fulfilled, not appearing. Appearing was during the, uh, before the, the, the seals were opened. But when, the, when, the, when it came for the seals, the Lord himself descended from heaven with a shout and a voice, uh, uh, um, with, with, with a shout, voice, and the trumpet of God. Blessed be the name of God. Remember, those three things were all done by one person, Christ, when he was descending. Now you tell me that, no, he's still descending. Now, if he's still descending, which means the book is not yet in the hands of the believer. But if you said the book is in the hand of the believer, are you saying that he dropped it when he was descending? No, 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 no. It was, the Bible clearly says he comes down and puts one feet on the earth, the other on the sea. Really, that's a symbol we know, but it's to take control. Christ comes in his church and takes control of his church and subdues the Antichrist and the, the, the beast, the, the image to the beast. Oh my, my, blessed be the name of the living God. Let's continue on. Let's continue on. Uh, it says, to go back and we will restore again as Adam and Eve in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. The threefold mystery of God, his body, oh my. Notice closely now, like in types, Israel of old, blank spot. I am I'm taking too much time on it. Congreg congregation says no. Don't let me don't let me don't let me go to. Now listen. Now we aren't got but about 20 more pages. See see? But now I just a little bit now. And then then I will leave you or oh, or oh, go on to next summer and or oh, sometime if the lord uh, if the lord is willing see paragraph um paragraph 5 uh, 31 now notice united together under one headship in like manner type of israel of old now you getting it like israel of old of of old one god vindicated by a pillar of fire and revealed himself through a prophet to be the word. The same pillar of fire, same way, he cannot change his way. Is that just perfect as it can be? Isn't it? See? So he's saying, like typing Israel of old, he's trying to show us that we are, we, the, 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 the move of God, beginning with the seven church ages, is totally a separate move from the move God had with Israel. With Israel, they were walking in the natural. They were a shadow of how God was going to walk with the people in the spiritual. And then now, uh, 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 how did that journey started? It started by one God who was vindicated by a pillar of fire, who was working through a prophet Moses, and was given two signs. And the third sign was to bring judgment if they refuse to receive these two signs and was sent to deliver the people that were in bondage. And, and then uh, he delivered the people, brought them to the wilderness, gave them the commandments, the message of the day, and then was leading them to the promised land where finally the Messiah came in human form called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And that's what has happened in our day when Paul sent Moses, uh, the, um, the, when Paul met the great pillar of fire, he was given the, the Ten Commandments, he was given the commandments, the commandments of God. And now God started moving with the church during the seven church ages, bringing the people. Take, Paul said, delivering you from the powers of darkness into the gospel of the light of the Son of God. Blessed be the name of God. You have to remember that Paul never knew Jesus in the flesh. He knew Jesus in the spirit. When Paul met Jesus, he never met a man. He met the pillar of fire. Just like Moses 
when he met Jesus, he met, even met a man, he made the pillar of fire. But at the end of the dispensation of the law, the pillar of fire came in human form. And at the end of the gentle dispensation, the pillar of fire which Paul met has come in human form called William Aaron Brenham. The Messiah made flesh. The Messiah coming in the physical form so that the Gentile bride might know who its mate is. And our mate is the word made flesh in William Aaron Brenham. We now know our destiny. Even on the other side, beyond the curtain of time, it was William Maron Brenham that was lifted up and placed above something which was higher. Actually, that's a throne. Brother Brenham was so, was so a humble person that every time he would say things in a way that people would not get stumbled. But remember, on the other dimension, we hear that he was lifted up higher and put on something higher. And then he asked, why are you doing this? Then he was told you were born a reader. Hallelujah. Just like Moses was born a reader. And in the wilderness, he became their king. He became their judge. He became the lawgiver. So was Jesus Christ born a leader. And indeed, he was the leader because he was God made flesh. Hallelujah. But he had come to take the place of man that he may give his body as a sacrifice so that here at the end time, the same God that was in Christ our Lord would now come into us and become one with us. And Jesus said, in that day, you shall know that we are one. And this is the day in which we have seen the Lord of glory becoming one in human flesh, called William Aaron Brenham, and we being part of that body by receiving the word the seed quickened we are part we the whole thing is one god with one king in our midst the prophet hallelujah amen just perfect as it can be isn't it congregation says amen one one god how many gods did uh, israel have congregation says one how many has the bride got? One. How many will there ever be? One. Sure, sure. There is only one God. <coughs> Israel had one God. The bride has got one God. Hallelujah. The word made flesh in our day. We are not waiting for another God. The God that was killed and put at Calvary, that was the body, not God. That was his body, the temple. The sacrifice, the God that was in that temple, the God that was in Jesus has returned the second time in the physical form of his bride, manifested in a prophet, the king becoming one with his church at the end time. How we are so grateful to the almighty God. Oh, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. I am so grateful to God to bring this rest to his church. What were we going to do in this day when all denominations are saying, very soon Jesus is coming, very soon Jesus is coming. They want Jesus to come in the way they have been taught by the scribes, the modern pastors and the Pharisees. But he came in the way that is written in the word. He came as the son of man, the son of God in the son of man. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. I know the elect will catch it. See, uh, 5.33. See, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, which was the pillar of fire in the days of Moses, the great prophet, he was directed by a pillar of fire. Is that right? Congregation says, Amen. All right, going to the promised land. 5.34. And in the Christian age, there was one God which appeared in the form of a pillar of fire, which appeared in the form of a pillar of fire to a prophet called Paul, who was sent to the Gentiles to take a people out for his name's sake. Is that right? Congregation says, Amen. And in the last days has come down in like manner. The same God that appeared to Paul in the last days has come down in like manner. The same God that appeared to, to Moses now comes down in like manner and manifested in physical form of Jesus Christ to the Jews. But to the Gentile it was William Aaron Brenham. The pillar of fire coming down in William Aaron Brenham to be manifested as God in the physical form amongst his people. Blessed be the name of God, that the people may know their husband. See, in the, in the same sign, the same wonder, the same 
Peter of fire. Same gospel, same word, same manifestation. His body will do the works that he promised. Like in Mark 16 and so forth, his body was not held in the grave, but was recognized with him in the resurrection. Do you get it? Congregation says, Amen. Then the body of the believing children will not be held in the grave when he comes, but will be recognized with him because he died for the purpose to resurrect the bride. You cannot remain in your graves. The son of righteousness has risen with wings in this day. You can't remain in the graves. If you remain in the graves, you are not part of the body. The body recognized because it is his body, because it's the word. It's completely yielded from the denomination of things to him. And he is the word, see, and and it's recognized with him because now we have the first fruit of resurrection by, by know that uh, we have passed from death unto life, become prisoners of his, and God is proving to us by his personal headship that he is the same yesterday, today, today and forever, doing the same things through the church that he did then. He has repeated everything that he did when he came to Israel in Jesus. Now he is repeating all those things through the church. A man called William Aaron Brenham with the whole church world, world behind him. He in me and I in him and in you and you know so forth. That's right. I just want to thank God I'm hearing from my wife a wonderful testimony. There was a customer uh, that gave me a job, and I, uh, and I worked for him. He put backgrounds at his house, and then he, there was a small uh, a strike which happened uh, in the council, and it happened that this man was a very good man, but was caught up in this situation, and they were fired. And this man came asking for prayers, and we prayed, and we believed, and I've always believed for him. It's now, he stayed almost uh, two years. I don't know if it's two years or three years. I'm just told that he is the one that they just passed by here by a council track which was collecting refugee and the man is back at his work. And I just want to thank the Lord that though it takes time when we pray, uh, you actually answer instantly, Lord, but then we don't see it. It comes to pass in its season. I just want to thank our Lord, the word made fresh in the name of William Maron Brenham for answering our prayer for that family. I really love that man. I know they are, they are not believers, but they have been a good help to us. And I'm grateful for that. What, when we pray, it may take years. I, I think this has taken two to three years, but uh, the request has been answered. Uh, the man just passed by here, and uh, the wife, my wife was just telling me that she, she made a shout to say, Hello! Oh my, and me, I, I forgot about the, there was such a request in the house of God. And, uh, and then my wife just reminded yeah, the person that was shouting there, which I answered back, is that man is restored at his work. And we all give praise to the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the word made flesh in our day, who came again in the form of a man called William Maron Brenham, a second time to the earth. And we are the beneficiary of this uh, coming of Christ in this day. Uh, may the Lord uh, be blessed and uh, be honored, be glorified. All oh, wisdom to the Lamb of God that has come again in flesh to us and we have seen the face of God with our own eyes. We have heard the voice of God with our own ears. Hallelujah. We have heard the ritual of voice of Christ in this day and we still continue to hear it and feed upon it. May the Lord bless each and every one of you. And I say all those that have brought the request in the house of God, just hold on. As we have believed, it shall be according to what we have asked him. If it's in, if it's in accordance with the word of God, it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. God knows better than us. Our, our part is to just ask in faith and leave it there. Oh, if he says no, then it's no for good. If he says yes, it's yes for good. Always remember that. Never, never, never forget that. His body was not held in the grave. Recognize with him in the resurrection. Same as he is now. Listen, which means this. His word, which he is, has, has begun to be risen. The word, 
that down through the age of Ruther, Wesley C has begin to rise up to its power. There it begin to move. Then it moved a little more. Now it's coming up to identification. See, now, now to the life in the body is the vindication of the rapture is at hand. It begins with Ruth saying it's rising. Then it goes to uh, Wesley, it's rising. And then Pentecostals. Then now life comes into the body. Hallelujah. Which is a vindication of rapture. Then he says the rapture is at hand. I know this word hand, it's a, it's a big word, and uh, we, we leave it into the hands of God. When you see the headship and the body becoming one, and the fullness of the measure of his manifestation shows that the body is about ready to be received to the headship. The body is about ready to be received to the headship. Now you see, he has already told us the headship is Christ, the Word. And he's already told us that the Word and the church has become one, which means the, the body has been received. The, the event of 1963, that crowd, that was the headship coming to be joined to the body. God bless you.